I'm Jamie Stangroom and I've been tracking down old Star Wars actors so you don't have to. My latest guest is an actor whose career has spanned decades and maybe even centuries. He's a British institution and should possibly be in one. Brian Blessed, the oldest man to reach the North Pole and the only man who's punched a polar bear right in the face. <laughs> in a bid to avoid Brian's Polar Bear Express, I began the interview by giving him a please don't hit me, I'm a human kiss on the face. George and I, Lucas, got an absolutely marvellous because he gives wild imagination. Did you audition for him or you just uh, give uh, him a uh, No, I just had a long chat. Uh, and he wanted me, I met him, we chat for about half an hour. He said, he part, he, let me just talk to Brian. And we got a marvellous skill. And he wanted me to, he said, I thought of you as one of the Jedi. He said, but you're much too powerful for the part. And I need your energy in the film. And so suddenly, my agent said, you've been offered the part of Boss Nass. You know all the secrecy around films these days? Well, I have a theory that Brian's to blame for all of it. My evidence comes from a story in his own book involving the Phantom Menace script and the Jar Jar Binks of fax machines. And now doing Tom Jones in the country. Tom Jones, the period piece, will send him to the hotel. The secretary there is going to be very quiet about it and secrete uh, uh, and, and uh, make sure nobody knows about it. And it'll come through the fax machine there. But the fax machine there had jaws. I mean, it looked like nothing on bloody earth. So, dang, 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 dang. It came through the fax machine at great speed with big paper this big. And it filled the whole bloody hotel lounge. And we couldn't control the bugger. And the, the people uh, in the hotel and all the actors, because they were dying to read it, were all reading the bloody script. The most when it's suppo film when it was supposed to be top secret. Did you own up to leaking the script? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't tell him more about that. I didn't tell him about leaking the script all over bloody Wiltshire. No, I didn't tell him about that. He'd been, been totally alive. It's all bloody silly. For God's sake, the secret You were there physically, weren't you? I played it. They modelled everything around me. I'm there with George. And he said, there are the Naboo, and there are the Jedi, and they all kneel in front of you. And they say, please help us, Boss Ness. And I want you to do something exciting. Because that starts the war. And so, say action. Action. Mr. Like a disc. Maybe we can be friends. Cut, cut, cut. And George said, Brian, you goddamn mad bastard. That's exactly what I wanted. <laughs> Did you hate Jar Jar Binks? No, 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 no. I, I, I did advise at times. I didn't interrupt people's interpretation because his interpretations were terrific. He's fine. But if you're playing a character like that or you're playing Boss Nass, I always made sure that my noises didn't interfere with dialogue. Because I had a lot of plot. So though I am saying, me so like -a this, I'm saying like, I like this. You. You no think that I am thick. You know, you, Nabu, don't look down on me. So I made it clear. And then I made noise. <coughs> I made noises. But I didn't make noises on the line. And I think at times Jar Jar Binks makes noises on the line. And he has a lot of plot. So the audience will go, what did he say? What did he say? Like when they want to see me at the end, the Jedi, they say, where is Boss Nass? And the line is, he's in his sacred grove. Which is a very interesting line. And he went, What? It's in his what? He's in his sacred grove. Did you say any of this to Lucas? I did. What? I said, you lose a bit of plot, but you have to be careful. Because it evolved me a bit. And George said, I'll watch it, Brian, I'll watch it. The face of Darth Vader was played by the late Sebastian Shaw. Here's a story about the time Brian bumped into him shortly after filming Return of the Jedi. I've been doing a Star Wars and I've been playing a character in it. Uh, they unwind a helmet off my head. I can't remember yet. What was it, darling? Is that true? Oh, yes. Uh, Darth Vader. I'm Darth Vader. You're what? Do you understand the world? <laughs> the world 
wants to play Darth Vader's face. Don't you know that, Sebastian? Because she was a big star from the 40s. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that, Brian, because they only paid me a little wage. They always say the villains are the best part. No, no. The great depth belongs to Guinness. It was his. Strange. Uh, you know, Alex doing it. Uh, I've met Guinness many times. I found it very interesting. And of course, it's full of all kinds of philosophers. Thespian Alec Guinness reportedly hated being in Star Wars. So I asked Brian if there was any truth behind this tasty Jedi beef. No, he loved it. It's not true. Alec was madly in love with the whole thing. It was time to see if Brian still had what it takes to return to that galaxy far, far away. This is Boss Nass channeling his inner William Wallace just because. <laughs> Lying in useless beds many years from now, would you shall be willing to trade all the days from this day to that, from one chance, just one chance, to come back here and tell useless <coughs> enemies they may take Weiss's lives, but they'll never take Weiss's freedom. As far as I know, Brian's still there wobbling his face. Do you agree with his critique of Jar Jar? Who would you like me to track down next? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And why not show some cyber love by giving this video a like? Unless you hated it, in which case just move along.